Electric cars are becoming more and more popular, with large automobile companies such as Ford, VW, and Hyundai releasing electric vehicles, it's clear to see that the future is electric. One major component in electric vehicles is the charging. Now this is probably foreign to most new buyers because they've never owned an electric vehicle before. So if you are considering purchasing an electric vehicle like a Tesla, or if you already own one but just want to learn more, this video will walk you through the steps on everything you need to know about charging and also how maybe you could save a few dollars in the process. First, let's talk about the lingo. So electric vehicles can kind of be a little difficult to understand at first because it deals in kilowatt per hour instead of miles per gallon. We are used to dealing with miles per gallon because that is the standard we use in gas powered vehicles. Both measure efficiency, but just do so in a different manner. So what is kilowatt per hour? According to JD Power, it is a measurement of electricity equivalent to the amount of energy expended in one hour by one kilowatt. As such, the kilowatt per hour per 100 miles rating aims to define an EV's efficiency in the same way that a miles per gallon rating applies to conventional vehicles. Another thing to clear up right up front is that just because you have X amount of miles available on your car doesn't mean you can actually use all of those miles. So for example, I have the 2021 Tesla Model 3 long range and on Tesla's website, it says that this vehicle gets 353 miles per range. But number one, you should only charge 80 to 90% during charging in order to maintain battery health. And number two, the battery range does decrease over time. It is normal for your battery to decrease slightly over the first few months before leveling off. So just because the website says it has a certain range doesn't necessarily mean that you can use all of those miles. Now that we have defined the kilowatt per hour and the range, we can now talk about how to charge your vehicle. There are two different ways to charge your vehicle. You can charge at a charging location or you can charge at home. First, we're going to explore the charging networks. Typically, the appeal of an electric vehicle is the fact that you can charge at home, but more than likely, you're not always able to do so if you're gonna go on a long road trip or you need to charge very quickly. And this is where using a charging network comes into place, like the Tesla supercharger. I use my home charger quite often. I only use the 120 volt though, so it is relatively slow charging. So whenever I do go on a target run, I have a supercharger at the target I go to, so I'm able to plug in and shop simultaneously. There are different charging networks based on the vehicle's compatibility. The charging network that I use most often is Tesla's supercharging network. Tesla offers their supercharging network and their destination charging. Tesla operates 908 supercharging stations in the US and over 4,500 destination stations in North America. I personally use the supercharger over the destination chargers just because of where I live and my driving habits. At a Tesla Supercharger V3, a Model 3 long range operating at peak efficiency can recover up to 75 miles of charge in five minutes and charge at rates of up to 1,000 miles per hour. Not all of Tesla's superchargers are this fast, but Tesla's network as a whole is one of the fastest networks around. One caveat to this though is that only Teslas at this time are compatible with Tesla superchargers. I do like that Tesla owns these because then they also maintain them well in order to align with their brand. If you're interested in learning more about Tesla supercharging, I have a video, Tesla supercharging tips that I'll link above and in the description down below that you'll definitely want to check out. There are other charging networks such as EVgo, Electrify America, and ChargePoint that are universal chargers. They can charge Teslas as well as any other types of electric vehicles. The main downside to using these networks though are the speed. Most of these chargers are 240 volt or level two chargers, which can take up to eight hours to charge your vehicle. Each charging station also charges you differently. Tesla charges you by the kilowatt hour, while other networks like EVgo charge you by the minute. Make sure to check out all of these options and their pricing structures to make sure that you are getting the best deal.
I like to compare this to a gas station type situation where you're driving down the road and you want to find the cheapest gas. Well, we do the same thing with electricity, just looking at different networks and their pricing. Also something to note here is that these chargers are usually maintained by the businesses in which they sit on the property of. And for that, you usually get inconsistent reliability. When using a Tesla supercharger, you can quickly plug in your vehicle and then it charges your account on the back end. So you don't need to input any information on the charger itself or in your car at that point. But with all of these other charging networks like EVgo and ChargePoint, you sometimes already have to have a pre-made account either online or through the app in order to pay once you get to the fueling station. The next way to charge is using an at-home charger. There are many different charging options at home and also different speeds. The first one is using the 120 standard outlet. This is what I do when I am charging at home. I am just able to plug it right into the wall. I get about six miles of range when I do this, and the average is about four miles per hour. The next option is purchasing the Tesla wall connector. This is what Tesla recommends as the best home charging option. But the Tesla wall connector is an extra $500 on top of the cost of the Tesla itself. The Tesla wall connector can help you charge up to 44 miles per hour. The average electricity rate in the United States is 10.42 cents per kilowatt hour. Where I live in North Carolina, the average this month is 11.45 cents per kilowatt hour, and the rate is up 2.8% from prior month. This is still better though than supercharging because supercharging in my area is 24 cents per kilowatt hour. This makes charging at home 53% cheaper. Some of the states with the lowest electricity rates include Oklahoma at 8.88 cents per kilowatt hour, Washington at 9.96, and Idaho at 9.99, while some of the most expensive states include Hawaii at 30.76, Alaska at 18.89, and California at 17.2. One thing to note about energy rates are that some states are regulated and others are deregulated. You'll definitely want to know which one your state is because if your state is deregulated, then you're able to shop around for the best supplier so that you're getting the best energy rate. Deregulated states are usually the states with a higher population and cost of living. If you're interested in learning more, I will link a resource down below for you to check out. Also, no matter what kind of state you're in, you'll definitely want to call your energy provider to see when their off-peak hours are. This way, you can set your Tesla to charge during these hours so that you're paying a lower rate. Charging directly impacts the vehicle's range, and it's important to implement healthy charging habits. Tesla suggests charging every day using low-voltage charger and only supercharging when necessary. It is also best to store your vehicle in a place that is warmer in temperature. The daily recommended charging limit varies by car, but is usually around 80 to 90%. This should be displayed on your car's touchscreen, but you can also increase the charge to 100% if going on a long road trip or needing the extra miles. Another thing to keep in mind is that your car is consuming energy even when it's parked. Your car can lose a minimum of 1% of range just by being parked outside. So make sure to turn off sentry mode or any other features that you're not using so that you don't consume unnecessary energy. Learning about charging your EV at first can be daunting, but hopefully this video helped answer some of your initial questions. If you have some other questions I wasn't able to answer here, please put them in the comments down below and I will answer them to the best of my abilities. If you found this video helpful, please also give me a like down below as that really helps out my channel. Also, if you're interested in learning more about Tesla, I post videos every Tuesday and Thursday, so make sure to subscribe. But thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.